How are you feeling, Red? Couldn't get no better. Got to sit on my hands and keep clapping about how good I'm feeling. I'm uh, excited to head home. I mean, obviously I'm not in the house, but all things considered, feeling great. By a vote of eight to two, Red, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. Well, look, you had the first non-unanimous vote of the season. How shocked are you to be sitting here right now? Was this truly a blind side, or did you have a feeling things were going to go a different way? Well, there's definitely an inclination. Uh, you, you see little pockets of conversations happening in the house on, on a day when it should have been very cut and dry, or for what I was being told. So uh, there was definitely some suspicions, and you'll see me voice those concerns uh, on live feed and stuff there toward the end. Uh, but it still wasn't quite a surprise. I mean, I'd say it was 60-40, 60 that I would stay, 40 that I would go. Uh, and I think maybe hope was the only thing keeping me holding on to that 60. <laughs> but it definitely wasn't what I would call a blind side. I maybe had one eye open. You said that you felt most betrayed by Cam, but he and Bowie Jane were the only two votes to keep you in the house. Do you still feel betrayed most by Cam? No, I mean, in a lot of the new information, you can only know what you know until you know you know. So. Um, the, with the information that I had is why I felt betrayed. And now knowing that it may not have been exactly what it was, of course not. I, I really did love the guy. That's why you see the genuine hurt uh, that I went through throughout the week. Um, and ultimately, it was my honesty and loyalty that kept me from having that conversation with him. So uh, maybe going back, I'd have at least asked him, you know, what he thought was going on but I felt it better just to remain quiet and then have the conversation when the time came, but I, I didn't have that time. So mm -hmm. it is what it is. So you think that you would have mended that relationship had you stayed longer in the house? I think so, I mean, absolutely, because I would have eventually found out, because I was already having an, an inclination or a feeling that uh, maybe it wasn't the way that it was said, because the second time that I had the discussion with Jerry, it, dis it didn't seem as solid as it was the first time. He had definitely told me specifically that Cam came right to him and said that he wanted to be a pawn against me and then started counting votes against me. The second time he said, well, he didn't say exactly. So it definitely seemed odd, um, but I had already made commitments with Jared uh, that, you know, kept me from having that conversation, so. What were those commitments? That I would keep what me and him said confidential and that uh, I wouldn't go to Cam because there was a plan to backdoor him and they didn't want to alert him. So ultimately, I would have been the one that uh, would have uh, backstabbed my best friend with the information that I had. So they did. I mean, as far as Big Brother goes, that, that was an excellent game plan. Yeah, that's interesting. So do you really think that Jared would not have put you on the block if it were not for Cam in that case? No, no, no. I, I think we were we were already a target. I mean, people seen our connection early on. Uh, for me, I think it was hard to hide because I felt a little piece of home in Cam and that was what I was missing most in this game. Uh, it's really tough to leave three kids and a beautiful lady um, at the house. Uh, and I struggled with that quite a bit. And I think Cam was a little bit of solace that I found in the house just because he reminded me a lot of home. So people seen that connection right off. Mm -hmm. What is your biggest regret? And is there anything that you wish you'd done differently? Mm. Not with the information that I had. I mean, I think my plan was to act in the majority. I wanted to play a game of honesty, loyalty and integrity. And I think I did that. Uh, even though it sent me home early, I don't think I could go back and, and say that I would change anything. I mean, if I had it over to do over again next year, I may play a totally different sort of game. But going back into the same game uh, with the information that I had, I, I wouldn't change nothing. Well, you've said numerous times that Sari was one of the house guests you trusted the most. First of all, how surprised were you to find out that Sari is Jared's mom? Very surprised. I mean, I had a, a couple little uh, uh, hints that they might know each other in the, in the beginning. And they do look similar, but I kind of, uh, I put that aside because, you, you know, in your mind, you think you know exactly what Big Brother would do. But again, expect the unexpected. So that was probably my first mistake. Uh, so I, I really had no idea uh, that they what were. What were those hints? What were those initial hints that made you think, oh, do they know each other? Well, they just seemed really close right away. You know, there was, uh, you know, hugs and all this stuff. But in this game, it does kind of push you to build relationships quickly. Uh, and it didn't seem all that weird because I, I kind of gravitated toward Cam. And uh, there were also a, a, a look similarity there, you know what I mean, that I kind of seen. Um, but 
again, I just kind of put it out of my mind and, and move forward, so. Well, I'll tell you, Izzy immediately knew about Jared and Sari because she's a big fan of Survivor as well. So that might help understand why they're all a little bit close there. And I'm gathering that, that, you know, uh, the more I hear after, you know, post elimination, of course, uh, and she is, she is a force to be reckoned with, Izzy is. And, and to be honest, maybe one regret that I do have uh, potentially is not showing her that back door when Cam had the opportunity. <laughs> Do you know who won HOH? Cam, yeah, I heard, my boy. And congratulations, we have a new head of household, Cameron. Congratulations, Cameron. How you feel? Who do you think he's going to put up on the block? Honestly, because I haven't talked to him all week, I don't know, uh, but after this, I think those decisions will be uh, uh, weighing heavily on who he thought was responsible uh, for me leaving. Uh, because ultimately he didn't know, I, I guess, why I was so cold toward him uh, it, it is what I'm finding out. So I think um, I think Izzy is is probably going to be in danger. Hmm. Who would you like to see following you out the door? Uh, well, obviously, as far as gameplay, I, Izzy probably would be my number one choice, even though Sari did what she did. Uh, but they do got to be broke up. So... Um, only one of them can go. So I think it'd be nice to see Izzy knocked out of the game. I think she's, I don't know, I just, she's a wild card. Now, I do want to mention, uh, we saw in a conversation with Cam that you mentioned an extreme distrust in America. I think her, Blue, and Mimi have really similar personalities, except America is willing to use her womanly wiles to get what she wants, which makes it even worse. I'm just curious, what made you believe this was a strategy that she wanted to use? Well, so initially my first inclination, uh, and, all, and all of this is based in gameplay as well. It was never anything personal. I, I want to make that very clear. She's a super smart, uh, very capable woman, and, and I see that. So, but so there were just some things with her relationship with Corey. It was he said some stuff about you know if I'm going to find a woman, she has to find me funny, otherwise she's going to find me intolerable. Within five minutes, America was like, "Oh, you're so funny." I mean, it was literally like it was timed and, and that she was playing him for that. So that was my first inclination. And then seeing her with Cam, uh, she had a couple glasses of wine and her and Corey were supposed to be a thing, but she was rubbing on Cam and trying to get real close. So I was like, well, maybe that's her gameplay. You know, she's trying to use her pretty to get further in the game. Uh, but n none of my comments were ever misogynistic or, or personal. It was all game observation. At this point, who do you think is playing the best game to win the season? Oh, Lord, Sari. I mean, honestly, she is, uh, I mean, I trusted her wholly. And, uh, you know, you see where I'm sitting. So she's doing a really good job of uh, keeping her cards hid and uh, playing a game where she, I don't think she's afraid to lie or manipulate and all that. And I think, in hindsight, those are definitely traits that you need to use in Big Brother to get further, unfortunately. But lastly, you had quite the quotes throughout the season. I'd be nuttier than a squirrel if I didn't start worrying about my game. She's looking slicker and snot on a doorknob. I'm shaking like a chihuahua stuck in an electric fence. Did you plan these before getting in the house? Do these just come to you all the time? How did you come up with these? Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a person that uses uh, analogies, similes, metaphors in everyday life because I think it makes it easier to understand the things that I'm saying. And, I, and it also relates to my to my real life. And the correct redism is nuttier than a squirrel turd, just to be clear. Please uh, correct me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, a lot of it is is uh, d directly off the cuff. I just, it, in the moment, whatever kind of pops into my brain comes out of my mouth. So, yeah. Okay. Could you come up with one of your redisms to summarize your BB experience? Well, there'd be a couple of them. You know, I was uh, about nervous as a cat in a room full of rocking chair most of the time, you know, with the way people was acting. Uh, but you got to stay with it and get busy. Uh, some might even say busy as a skeeter at a nudist colony. I might pocket that one and see how it fits on me. <laughs> yes, ma'am.